in the last class uh, the problem that we considered was um, there was a unit step like uh, potential barrier we took this as x is equal to 0 and then toward the positive side uh, we have uh, there is a potential which is constant the, uh, the magnitude of that potential we took it as v0 and then I said that we have an energy uh, of the incoming electron which is less than that v0 so that is what we did and uh, a similar problem uh, but for electron with a higher energy is another problem that you can solve uh, that is if, if the electron energy is greater okay so e uh, so this is like a second part of the same problem you can consider i am giving it as a homework okay so if uh, e is greater than v0 find the reflection coefficient r is the reflection coefficient and capital T is the transmission coefficient because in this case the electron can continue to propagate to the right side because its energy is greater than V0 So I want you to find out uh, these two quantities and this I am leaving it as a homework. Okay. So the case we have considered was E less than V0 in which case we had to do a exponentially decaying solution because of the negative sign but in this case you will have both uh, region, region 1 and region 2 we will have exponential solution exponential complex exponential solutions so in this case uh, we will, we can have propagating waves wave propagating to the plus infinity direction uh, and also wave can be reflected back from uh, the boundary okay uh, where you have the step potential barrier coming so there will be a reflection and there will be a transmission so what i want you to find out is uh, t and r okay so the definition of uh, r we have already seen and uh, whereas the definition of t is basically uh, what is the flux which is going to the right divided by the incoming flux so r is uh, flux of particles reflected that is uh, reflected means going back in the minus x direction after hitting the boundary they will return back flexo particle uh, <coughs> returning let me say return divided by uh, the incident flux so that is the definition so I have uh, shown you how, how we need to find out this probability density function multiplied by um, the velocity in that region. Okay. And then in, in the case of R, both velocity will be same, so they, they will cancel out. But uh, when you find T, that is the flux of particle transmitted. Okay. So, so this will be having a different velocity uh, compared to the velocity of the incident particle incident flux okay so the velocities will not exactly cancel uh, so there will be some factor coming over there okay and the solutions uh, you will take in region 1 and region 2 in a similar way with complex exponentials and uh, as we have argued that there cannot be any return waves um, in region 2 because uh, this potential is going to continue to the infinity and therefore uh, the wave will continue to propagate to plus infinity and there will be no return wave so there will only be three constants um, and what is more important is the ratio of these constants and then uh, express uh, r and t in terms of those ratio of constants just like we did in the previous problem so this is a homework problem that i am giving you now for today we will go to another problem 
this problem is um, uh, <coughs> is a tr uh, is to explain a very uh, unique phenomena in quantum mechanics called tunneling. Okay. Tunneling through potential barrier. So there is a potential barrier and the incoming electron has uh, an energy which is less than the barrier potential but still it manages to cross to the other side. Okay, So the potential let me just draw it. So just like uh, the problem that we solved in the last class we have a potential barrier but the difference is that in this case it is finite width. It is not like continuing to infinity. The earlier case we have it going to infinity. So, but now it is like this. So we have some V0 height uh, and the potential barrier extends from start from x equal to 0 but it only totally continue up to x equal to a. So this is our x direction and then we have the electron coming in that is E. Okay, so this is the problem that uh, we need to handle. So now here, <coughs> so how many regions are there? So if you look at uh, this is region 1, then you have region 2 and then you have another region which is region 3 which was not there earlier because the potential stopped at x equal to a onwards it is 0. So we need to write the solution of the Schrodinger equation in three different regions and then apply the boundary condition and uh, solve uh, the problem. So in region 1 as the energy is greater than the potential, potential is 0 in region 1. Uh, so we could, so if in region 1 the Schrodinger equation is minus h cut square by 2m. Again we are in uh, solving the time independent Schrodinger equation. So d square by dx square I can take instead of dou square by dou x square because uh, there is only one variable which is x because it is a 1D problem. If there was a uh, 3 dimension or 2 dimension then you have to take dou square by dou x square and dou square by dou y square etc. And let us take a uh, phi as the wave function which is the position part of the total wave function. Okay, So which is also a function of x <coughs> in this case. Um, so plus uh, the potential here is uh, <coughs> uh, 0 and this is equal to uh, E uh, phi of x. So that is the case in region 1. So this uh, you can uh, arrange it in standard form and write it as d square by d x square phi of x plus 2 m e square root of e then divide by h cut whole square into psi of x equal to 0. Similarly in region 2 you could write uh, it as that square by 2m d square by dx square phi of x plus <coughs> now we have a constant potential so we need to take that into account v0 is the value of the potential and it is greater than e so if i take that uh, e from the other side to this side and then i can write like this so this is uh, expression for potential. So I am putting a, for region 1 I put a suffix i or 1 and then here for region 2 I put a suffix 2. Now this uh, since uh, v0 is greater than e um, I will multiply uh, with a factor such that this minus h cut square by 2m will be going from the derivative term and that will become d square of x divided by 
dx square and then uh, all the remaining term I will collect uh, <coughs> and what I will do is that uh, this minus sign which will come I will keep it here and then 2m into v0 minus e so there is a square root here now under the square root you have a positive quantity okay but this minus sign because I have multiplied there will be a minus sign coming here this will be multiplied with h the whole square so this is uh, in region 2 is equal to 0 and in region 3 which is like re region uh, 1 you will have <coughs> similar expression so I will directly write d square but I will still denote it as region 3 wave function um, square plus square root of 2m e is exactly the same differential equation. Is equal to 0. So these are the three uh, differential equation 1, 2 and 3. Now the solution of the first and third will be the same whereas the solution of the second differential equation will be the different because of the minus sign. <coughs> so we need to whenever there is a minus sign here uh, and then there is a positive number multiplying the wave function. In such cases you have to take exponentially decaying solution uh, whereas if it is a plus sign like 1 and 3 we have to take um, uh, exponential complex exponential solution. So in region 1, the solution for uh, uh, say for example in region 1, we will have a solution which will be uh, a uh, e raised to, uh, I should now call this, this as uh, say k1 square and I should call this as k2 square and this one as uh, so this one is again k1 square okay. all right so this will be equal to <coughs> a e raised to uh, j k1 x plus b uh, into e raised to j with the minus sign k1 x ok so that is the solution for the first Schrodinger equation uh, in region 1 and in region 2 uh, so let us call this as uh, by some name so let us say so this was uh, our phi Okay, we already have named it so phi 1 of x is equal to this uh, then similarly phi 2 of x is equal to some other constant say c into e raised to so now I have to take uh, there will be a uh, can take minus k 2 x there will be not j there ok it will not be complex plus uh, d either I can take plus or whatever way goes to minus i 2 x so this is for region 2 and for region 3 <coughs> um, we have uh, yet another constant e into e raised to <coughs> e raised to j k 1 x plus b sorry uh, this will be f f into e raised to minus j k 1 x hope this is clear to everyone so 
depending upon whether what is the sign here uh, for the coefficient of uh, phi of x, uh, we have to write down the solution either as complex exponential or uh, as uh, uh, simple exponential. Now, um, in this uh, different terms, uh, applying boundary condition, one thing we can say is that there is no uh, uh, since uh, there is no uh, left propagating wave in region 3 ok <coughs> that is after the barrier uh, it is unphysical to us, uh, have any kind of return waves in region 3. So, you can have waves, uh, different kinds of wave. One is like it is incidenting and then that will be returning. So, that is okay. And then again some will be transmitting that is also okay. And it will be returning from here. So, that is also okay. But uh, some of this uh, will be propagating and it will be keep on going but there is no return in region 3. So, the wave that corresponds to returning uh, in region 3 or the left propagating wave in region 3 is unphysical and therefore, the corresponding coefficient we will have to take it as 0 which is f in this particular case. So, we will take so that is uh, f uh, should be equal to 0. So, this is a boundary condition which means that uh, the uh, in region 3, we have only a right propagating wave which is E into exponential j k 1 x. So, which means that we have uh, some coefficients. So, the coefficients are a, b, c, d and e. <coughs> so, these are the coefficients. There are 5 coefficients in this problem and that is what make uh, the algebra more complicated and precisely because of this reason we will um, we will not uh, um, try to uh, proceed with the entire algebra but uh, what we need to find out uh, is uh, so let me just also show what is uh, Okay, so k1 is uh, basically square root of 2 m e by let's get square and k2 is square root of uh, 2 m e v naught by e by let's get square. So, these are the definitions of uh, k1 and k2. Uh, so, what we need to find out is basically the transmission uh, so how do what what are the boundary conditions here there are uh, you know two boundaries one is at x equal to 0 so at x equal to 0 boundary so we need to apply the boundary condition that is our psi 1 of uh, 0 minus I, I have to say phi 1 of 0 minus should be equal to uh, phi 2 of 0 plus. Okay, so this is one boundary condition. So, if you apply that boundary condition again, I will not solve it fully, but I am just uh, showing you what, what is a way of uh, finding out these constants. Um, so, if, if there are 5 unknowns, we need 5 equations to find out all the values. But in this case, what we will do is that uh, we will write them all in terms of uh, 4 unknowns by dividing it throughout by A. Uh, so, that means uh, B, C, D, E, we will express it in terms of A. Uh, and then we will use 4 boundary conditions. 2 at uh, x equal there are two boundary condition at x equal to 0 uh, one is this this is called uh, continuity of the wave function continuity of 
wave function. Wave sh function should be continuous. When the potential is finite, the wave function should be continuous. Okay, and uh, not only that, uh, its uh, first derivative should also be. So that means d psi i uh, of x by dx at x is equal to zero minus should be equal to d psi two of x by dx at x is equal to zero plus. So this is also warranted. That is, the wave function should be continuous. Continuity of the first derivative. The reasons I have already given in the last class. Why, when the potentials are finite, why the first and uh, you know, the wave function and its first derivative both should be continuous. Continuity of first derivative of wave function. So that is uh, that that is uh, you know the boundary condition at x equal to zero. We have two conditions. One now this is two. Now at uh, x equal to a boundary, again we have similar condition. Mm, that is number three. The wave function should be continuous at the second boundary. That is uh, two. Uh, pi of x at x is equal to a minus uh, should be equal to phi 3 of x uh, x is equal to a plus and then the last boundary condition we have is this that is the first derivative d by dx of psi 2 of x at x is equal to a minus should be equal to d by dx of psi 3 of x x is equal to a plus. <coughs> okay. So, again these are uh, uh, same similar boundary condition that we saw only thing is that this is at x equal to a. So, if you apply this boundary condition for example, I uh, will just show you the expression is going to become uh, first of all we have a b c c c into e raised to uh, k 2 a you put x is equal to a <coughs> and uh, uh, plus d into minus uh, k 2 a and that is the LHS and the RHS is uh, you have e into e raised to uh, j k 1 a ok. So, you put x is equal to uh, a and so that is your uh, third boundary condition and the fourth boundary condition you just uh, need to take a derivative. So, that will be uh, k 2 uh, will come out and then you have c e raised to k to a then you have minus d e raised to minus uh, k to a and this will be equal to e into j k 1 into e raised to j Okay, so these these are the equations that we have. So two equations similar to what we derived in the previous problem are there for x equal to zero, and then we have uh, uh, additional two. One. So so there are four equations, and uh, uh, a convenient way of uh, proceeding is uh, to divide all the equation with a, and then uh, you will have. Uh, uh, instead of 5 constants you will have 4 constants ok dividing the boundary condition 1 2 3 4 by a you will have uh, 4 uh, constants and 4 equations and then you can try to solve uh, those 4 expressions ok. So, next thing uh, what we need to do is um, <coughs> So, uh, 
uh, what we are interested is again finding the transmission coefficient uh, capital T and reflection coefficient uh, R. So, to find uh, transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient. Okay. What we need to do is, um, as I said, uh, divide everything with A. So, that is a kind of normalization that you do. So, if you divide the, this equation with A, uh, you will have C by A, D by A, E by A, etc. And uh, here also you will have uh, C by A, D by A, like this. So, you, the equation that comes from the first and second boundary condition also, you do like that. And uh, so, you will get uh, the new constants which uh, are, uh, you know, C by A, D by A, E by A and B by A, okay. Now, the reflection coefficient is uh, defined as, in this particular case, reflection coefficient R is basically, uh, in region 1 we have a uh, B, you can de uh, define it as B by A into B by A <coughs> star, uh, yeah, that is it. That is the reflection coefficient because the uh, flux into probability density, uh, which is basically coming, uh, so if I write one more step here, how, how you get this. So, it is basically B, B star. So, this is the probability density or you can say uh, modulus B the whole square. Modulus B the whole square into velocity in region 1 divided by modulus of A the whole square velocity in region 1. So, both A and B uh, the right propagating and the left propagating in region 1 we have to consider for finding the reflection coefficient. So, the velocities cancel and what you get is uh, uh, modulus of B the whole square by modulus of A the whole square and uh, this is basically B by A into uh, B by A the conjugate. So, if you, uh, so one of the unknown is B by A. So, that unknown you find out uh, because there are four equations and uh, four unknowns. One of the unknown is B by A, other is C by A, D by A and E by A. So, there are four unknowns. So, there are four equations and four unknowns. Unknowns are B by A, then C by A, D by A and E by A. So, you can solve four equations and four unknowns, but the algebra is going to be really complicated. So, that is why I am avoiding it because we will waste the entire one hour or so or more than one hour in just evaluating this. So, if you evaluate this, uh, you will get an expression which is called the reflection coefficient and uh, then similarly, you can find out uh, the transmission coefficient T. So, that will be what? That will be modulus E the whole square in velocity of particles in region 3 divided by A modulus square. <coughs> so, this is the numerator is the flux which is incidenting and then we have to sorry uh, sorry this is the flux which is uh, transmitted in region 3 divided by the flux which is incidenting. So, that is uh, B in region 1, but since uh, if you look at um, region 1 and region 3 the potentials are uh, uh, 
zero so therefore the velocities uh, should be same uh, so this will also cancel each other so therefore this also you can write it as e by a uh, into e by a conjugate e by a divided into e by a is a one of the unknown right so that uh, you can find out this e, this constant uh, so all you need to find out is b by a and e by a so these are our interesting interest the c by a and d by a even if you don't find it out it's okay uh, but we need the expression for b by a and e by a so you find that's out so that is uh, this and uh, since uh, the total number of particles should be uh, total particles should be conserved then if you add the reflection coefficient plus transmission coefficient you should get one also so essentially if you find one that is also enough because the other is one minus uh, uh, such that so uh, transmitted particle plus reflected particle uh, so that should be equal to 1 which is the incident particle so this has to be satisfied so i am not doing the algebra uh, but if you do the algebra what you will get uh, uh, under certain condition so if you do the algebra uh, if you want i can uh, you know uh, forward some material uh, you know which uh, does it uh, uh, does the complete algebra or you can even if you search it uh, uh, you will get it okay so the transmission coefficients uh, which is uh, of the most interest to us uh, t and this will be approximately can be written why do i say approximately uh, written as i will tell is equal to e by v0 into 1 minus e by v0 and it's quite easy to remember this formula e raised to minus 2 k to a uh, so this uh, why it is not exactly equal uh, because this is under certain approximation and the approximation is uh, when e is much smaller than v0 that means the incident particle energy energy compared to the potential uh, height of the, the uh, means potential barrier height it is much lesser say one tenth so one tenth is uh, uh, is a quant i mean if it is one tenth if e is one tenth of v naught you know classically no particle should go to the other side i mean it, there should be you know zero particle so if a thousand particles are coming none of them should go because the potential is so huge that uh, it is 10 times larger than the energy of the particle so it will just bounce back but quantum mechanically there is a non-zero probability uh, this is what we call it as tunnel okay so this uh, is what we call as tunnel so let's do a problem uh, so that we will understand what is its significance ok so problem estimate estimate the Tunneling probability of so tunneling probability means the transmission probability or transmission coefficient. They are same thing. Estimate the tunneling probability of uh, an electron. So the particle is given as electron. So that uh, helps us to know, you know, what is its mass and etc. Of an electron, estimates the tunneling property of an electron uh, uh, 
a incidenting on a rectangular barrier the barrier that we have considered is also called as rectangular barrier of height v naught equal to 1 electron volt and uh, width width of the barrier which is uh, what we took as a um, width uh, say a equal to 15 Armstrong given the energy of the electron electron as E okay energy is taken as E E is basically zero point two uh, electron volt. So you can compare V naught and E if you look at uh, it is only one fifth okay so it's much smaller than the uh, much smaller than the uh, E is much smaller so given so so E is uh, uh, much smaller than V naught and therefore we can write uh, T is equal to approximately 16 into uh, E by V naught into 1 minus E by V naught into exponential minus 2 K2 A. So if you find out all of this uh, then we can immediately find out. So what is E by V naught? E by V naught is basically 0 0.2 electron volt divided by 1 electron volt. Okay, point 0.2 you can also write it as um, 1 by 5. So this is uh, basically 1 by 5. Or simply you can put it as point 0.2 itself. So better not put 1 by 5, just point 0.2. Okay, electron volt cancel and it is point two. Now the other quantity that we need is K2. Now what is the uh, uh, formula for K2? It is square root of 2m V0 minus E divided by H k So so here we require mass of the particle since it is given as electron we know uh, that it is 2 into 9.1 you take everything in SI unit uh, 9.1 into 10 raised to minus uh, 31 kilogram uh, into V naught minus E V naught is uh, 1 electron volt E is 0.2 electron volt so this is going to be 0 0.8 electron volt so SI unit we need to convert that into electron unit yeah, electron volt should be converted to joules because uh, then you, you can take everything in SI unit and you will get uh, uh, the value of K2 in SI unit. So unit is something that we need to be careful about otherwise we can go way wrong. So 0.8 electron volt means 0.8 into 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. So mass is in kilogram, energy is in uh, uh, joules uh, then this is under square root then divided by uh, <coughs> divided by so h was basically 6 point uh, 6.625 uh, so divided by 2 pi so 6.625 divided by 6.28 so it is 1.05 into 10 raised to minus 34 so this is uh, what we need to evaluate and if you evaluate this so 
So if you have calculator, you can uh, do this. So let me just try to do this. So two into nine point one. get it as um, this is what I am getting if somebody else is getting something else let me know 4.827 into 10 raised to minus 25 divided by 1.05 into 10 raised to minus 34 so this now divided by 1.05 into 4.597 into 10 raised to how much? into 9. So this is what I am getting. Okay, so, so that is my K2. So now um, I can evaluate this expression because I have all that I require to evaluate it. So T is approximately equal to 16 into, uh, so this is 0 0.2 into 1 minus 0 0.2 that is 0 0.8. Uh, again, these are uh, in electron volt. Okay, So uh, I need to 0.2 electron volt and uh, 0.8 electron volt. Um, okay, so here it is okay because uh, this is uh, unitless because we are taking the ratios E by E is in electron volt, V naught is in electron volt. So when you take the ratio, this is a quantity which has no dimension. In fact, T also uh, is a uh, quantity which has no dimension because it is the ratio of, you know, two fluxes so there should be no dimension so 0.2 into 0 0.8 into exponential minus 2 into uh, this one 4.597 into 10 raised to minus sorry plus 9 plus 9 into uh, then our a is given us uh, 15 Armstrong so 15 is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 9. 15 Armstrong is 1.5 nanometer. So I can write 15 Armstrong as 1.5. So that way I can cancel these two. Okay. So uh, let me just evaluate this. 
so minus 2 into 4.597 into 1.5 is this uh, so exponential of this exponential of minus 13.97 is okay so that multiplied with 16 multiplied with 0.2 multiplied with 0.8 So what I'm getting is 2.62 into uh, one, two, three, four, six. Ten raised to minus six. So this is what I'm getting. Yes. Uh, yeah. The answer is uh, there uh, given uh, in the. It is uh, somewhat matching. The answer is given as 2.76 into 10 raised to minus 6. I am getting 2.62. Maybe some of the <coughs> rounding off uh, has resulted in a change in the decimal places. Okay, so approximately this is the order of magnitude. That means if I have uh, one million particle coming from the left side, out of which one will go to the other side. So roughly, uh, not one, two or more than two will go to the other side. Okay, so we have a, a barrier which is very high. The width is given as uh, one point five nanometer, but the height uh, is uh, very high, one electron volt. Okay, the particle has energy which is only point two, so that means somewhere here. Now classically there is no way to overcome this only if it is greater than the uh, v naught uh, you can go to the other side but here though you can see that the probability is um, pretty less but uh, it is not zero okay and <coughs> usually in uh, devices what happens is that uh, the number of particles coming from the left will be something like uh, 10 raised to 16 or you know 10 raised to 17 etc so out of which uh, one, uh, one part in million or two part in million uh, will go to the right side so if uh, you have an incident particle which is of the order of 10 raised to 16 uh, which is coming then what is going to happen is out of that uh, a few of them that is uh, of the order of 10 raised to 10 uh, go to the other side so which will give rise to some current okay so though it is smaller compared to 10 raised to 16 but there is a leakage uh, current which we call okay and uh, some certain times it is undesirable to have this kind of leakage current and uh, that will uh, spoil the advantage of uh, the device which we would have otherwise got so one way to reduce it further is to make uh, the barrier width okay which we call as a0 if this barrier width is uh, increased then you will see that it will exponentially reduce this so even if it is a very large potential height but if barrier width is uh, smaller that is a a0 if it is smaller it is very much uh, sensitive with respect to the width of the barrier uh, you know more than the height of the barrier so because it is coming in the exponential decaying function here so the uh, uh, way to reduce the leakage current is basically increasing the width that is a a, a value here it is taken as uh, pretty high uh, therefore we got at least uh, you know uh, one part in million only or two part in million only is going to the other side 
you can see that sensitivity uh, like instead of you know 1.5 nanometer if we are taking only say uh, 0.1 nanometer or <coughs> something like that then instead of uh, 10 raised to minus 6 you will have some huge uh, number okay maybe one part in thousand will come to the other side so it's very sensitive with respect to the width of the barrier uh, and not so much sensitive to the height of the barrier but uh, as the technology of making devices uh, is progressing what uh, we are now seeing is that the width of these barriers uh, we want to reduce it as small as possible so that uh, the device size will be uh, reduced uh, to very large extent. We are making things smaller. Uh, only if you make each device smaller in the chip, then only the entire chip will be smaller, uh, which can accommodate large number of transistors, large number of devices, and uh, so that we can achieve more functionality from the chip. Uh, if you pack more number of transistors and this is only possible if you reduce this dimension of each of the transistor so there is a um, urge uh, from the technology side uh, to uh, reduce shrink the size of these uh, devices so but we can't continue to go beyond some um, uh, level and therefore uh, there is a bottleneck uh, because of this uh, tunneling Okay, so tunneling will create unwanted, uh, you know, leakage current, um, and that is uh, most of the time it is not desirable. But there are also devices which are entirely based on tunneling of electron, and uh, for example, tunnel diode. Okay, so where uh, everything depends on tunneling. So tunneling can be made into use by uh, making devices which operate on the basis of tunneling. Okay, so. But uh, conventional devices like uh, uh, CMOS transistors uh, or MOS transistor, uh, tunneling is an undesirable effect. But there are devices which make use of tunneling to make uh, novel devices. Okay. But this is entirely a quantum mechanical. This can't be understood in any way with the classical mechanics. Alright. So let's take a break. Uh,